okay. I think we're I think we're just gonna roll right into it. Let's right? do it. Let's flipping go. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the King of Average Podcast with your boy Malik and BB. Sorry, I didn't let you introduce yourself that time. My bad. My right, bad. Uh, we're coming to you obviously we're from a from a different, completely different setting here now. Uh, super exciting. It's the first time we go on video. Uh, we were hoping the setup would be a little bit different. We have like our own individual cameras, but today we're kind of just uh, we're winging it. We're winging it absolutely, oh. just like uh, what we've been doing so far. We're just flipping, we build as we go, backyard it as much as we can, literally in the backyard. Uh, but yeah, we just got the one. We just got the one camera set up right now. We got a couple of lights, threw some chairs in the back. He's got the string lights in the back. It looks dope. Let's go baby! Shout yeah. out to the eight decoration back there, bro. Those lights are. Clutch. Facts, bro. Facts. It looks nice. It looks nice. Uh, and we decided why not make this episode a little bit special since it is the first time we go on video by throwing in a couple cigars. So that's going to be the vibe for tonight. Let's go. Uh, pretty exciting stuff. How you feeling today? Dude, I'm feeling amazing. The fact that we're doing all this right now and it's going to be our first video that we actually put out, inshallah, for King of Average, I am stoked. Really, really Yeah, happy. it's flipping lit. So, yeah, so part of the introduction, this is part six out of six. Yeah, part six out of six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today's topic is going to pretty much, uh, it's in a sense like finishing that, you know, the first draft, we'll say, about this whole conversation titled What Makes a Man, right? A very exciting conversation that we decided, hey, you know what, we're going to kind of, you know, have it as a series as part of our uh, as part of our podcast, um, podcast, just because... Uh, you know, it's a conversation that needs to be had. It's a conversation that we had literally as friends uh, in a car ride from San Diego. And we thought, let's make a whole series out of this. Why not? Uh, so just to recap, what do you remember so far from the six or from the five that we recorded so far? Control, integrity. What else? Discipline. Discipline. Another one. Uh, Focus. Y- yeah. Yeah. And then I always, I always, I always forget that I always forget I for some reason. Why? Uh, yeah, we have the notes right here. Thank respect. Respect. Literally, the, the episode I just finished editing. So yes, this will be pretty much the the last part of this series, right? The last topic we want to you know touch upon that we believe is important for every person to develop, but especially somebody should develop if they want to be serious about themselves. Uh in a relationship setting if a man is interested in becoming a husband a father these are the six qualities that he really needs to master in order that he can perfect himself as a man so this last point this last topic we want to discuss today is the concept of maturity i think it really it really hits home to kind of wrap up this overall series of what makes a man with maturity with maturity yep yeah maturity is a great topic to kind of you know to close it out on because maturity is definitely a huge one, and you know it's kind of it's kind of obvious, you know, uh, to start things off. It's it's obvious that without having a like a developed sense of maturity, a man is not capable of holding down a family. A man is not capable of accepting the responsibility of having you know a wife or children. A man is not capable of the sacrifices or the compromises that he needs to make in a relationship situation i feel like you just got to play it by ear none of us are in the position of of marriage or having kids and stuff like that but i feel like it's one of those things where we all have some sort of like of like an idea of what we think marriage might be and also fatherhood might be but we don't have an absolute clue of exactly what's going to be going down like it's basically it's what I'm trying to say is that it's a it's a learning the whole thing is like a learning curve. You go with the flow and you have to be mature enough to be able to recognize that yo, I'm lacking in certain positions of whether being a husband, whether being a father, whether whatever, especially fatherhood, you have to look at yourself. Uh, you know, and just be like, yo, I gotta spend more time with my children yo i gotta lead by example i gotta be mature enough to then control my emotions 
it's so important. So I'm so happy that we're finishing off with maturity because maturity is one of those things where we always want to put maturity. Like we all, we automatically assume that maturity is with age, but that's not the case. There's so many times where like when we were young, it makes sense. Like by young, I mean like, you know, high school. We'd always walk around and be like, oh, that person's throwing some sort of like fit. It's just because they're teenager, whatever, they're immature. But being 28 right now, we're seeing other people who are even older than us. They're throwing the fit. They're throwing exactly what it is. So it's like, what's your excuse? So you almost become so like, so maturity not is not necessarily an age thing. It's not. It's it depends on the person. It varies per person. So you can't automatically assume that a person is going to be at a certain age and getting their ish together. That's not the thing. That's not the case. You're going to be let down by that because you're automatically going to be having some sort of a false assumption that everyone past a certain age is at a, at like a, a baseline maturity. That's not the case. Cause no, it's time and time again. I feel like even, you know, the multiple experiences growing up, whether it's from people close to you or just random people that you don't even know, but time and time again, you start to see these instances where, People will be older than you and you would expect more from them. Yet you can clearly tell that there is something that they're lacking. There is a sense of maturity that they just haven't developed yet, whether it's they're in denial or, you know, they're just not willing to accept the responsibility of whatever the situation is. And you mentioned, uh, I want to touch upon it a little bit. You mentioned that like oftentimes we don't get it because We think we're ready for a situation like marriage. We think we're ready for it. And even if you think you're mature enough, even if you think you have everything set, the finances for it, the stability, everything, everything set. Maturity is something, like you said, definitely has to come with experience. And it has to be a mindset that you develop before you jump into a committed situation. Because... When those things surprise you during that relationship, when those things surprise you and they, they, they definitely will, and they will hit you hard. If your, if your mindset of being mature towards that, those unexpected things, if it's not developed beforehand, then your reaction, when it happens, it might be detrimental. It's definitely going to cause some issues. Big facts. So there's, there's a saying is. Basically, I'm going to paraphrase it because like, I'm not going to, I can't say it verbatim, but it's basically saying like, you have to be ready. You have to be basically proactive instead of reactive. That's actually, that's the, that's exactly what it is. You got to be proactive. So if you feel like you're at a certain, like you're at a certain point of your life and you're ready, you got to look at yourself and you got to dive, you got to dive deep to like, Okay, cool. What are my issues as an individual? You know, usually when I actually talk to like a potential, right, a girl that I'm, I'm have some sort of interest in uh, getting married to, I ask her this, these questions. What's what's your biggest flaw? What's your biggest red flag in that you see in yourself? It's a very uncommon question. Because now you're forcing the other person to be like, oh, shoot, I'm going to think about what I lack in. And I have to either lie, which obviously that's not going to be progressive at all towards the relationship, or I have to be honest with myself. And I respect, I respect an honest answer. You'll be surprised because that way, if you if you air it out, if you if you say it, That way, the other person, it's fair that they can expect it. So they can be like, is this something I'm willing to tolerate? Or is this something that I just absolutely cannot deal with? That's that's actually, that's perfect. Also, to go on with it, is it lets the other person, the actual person saying their flaw, it lets them know an area of opportunity. Because they hear it from themselves. 
I'm not the person, for example, that's going up to the person that I'm interested in. I'm not the person like, well, this is what's wrong with you. Because if you say it like that, they'd be like, dude, you're just mad or you're tripping or you're hating or you're whatever it is. If you if you see your own flaw in yourself and you are the person to address it, then you know what to address. So that way, when someone else readdresses it to you or brings it to your attention, hey, look, yo, remember that one thing that you said that you're tripping out about? Like, like let's keep on working towards that. You won't. I feel like a person won't get as defensive. No, you're 100 percent right, and that's a beautiful point because, uh, you know it. Same thing, just like other things that we talked about before. If you want to make a, a certain change, if you want to make a certain change, you have to first start by recognizing what's wrong. You recognizing it, you recognize it, you accept it, and then from there you're able to accept potential change moving forward. Uh, I guess a, a question, a question that I wanted to ask is. Just overall, when you think maturity, what's the first thing that kind of comes up in your mind? Being able to accept constructive criticism. Okay, that's a huge point. That's a huge point. I like that. That's a lot. the first thing that comes to my mind. How about you? Um, it's the idea of being the bigger person. Being the bigger person. I feel like it's a lost art. Uh, being the bigger person. I feel like in so many situations, people really do just allow their ego to, you know, take control of their ability to, you know, assess a situation and do what's best for the situation, right? Being the bigger person is recognizing, hey, you know what? I'm going to have to put my pride aside. You know what? I'm going to have to, I might have to take an L, right? I might have to, I don't know, just uh, it's it's not going to go my way this time. But it's for the greater good. It's for the greater good. And being the bigger person or the whole concept of maturity for me as well, it really revolves around, you know, back to the conversation we had like many times before. Like what's significant, what's insignificant in life? You know? Like you get into picking your battles, picking your battles, 100%, 100%. Like you get into like petty arguments, right? You get into petty arguments often with people, whether they're, you know, close family, friends, whatever the case is. And you get into these petty arguments and sometimes you sit there and you go, like if you have the ability to think to yourself, yo, us going down this rabbit hole of whatever this conversation is, is utterly useless. Like it will not achieve anything. In that moment, you're able to cut it off and that, to me, is one of the ways that you can be the bigger person in the situation. Because you're able to just cut it off because you know where it's going to go. It can only lead to something worse. Right? And so you just let your pride you just let your pride down. You put your ego aside. And you see the situation for what it is. And you act maturely on it. Having vision is very important too. So I know that we we spoke about picking your battles, but also vision, foreseeing, having like a forecast of saying, yo, if I have this argument with this person, you start outweighing the pros and cons. Yo, what are the pros to this? You start looking at the future. If I go down this route, so either I'm going to make a right and go down the pro, or I'm going to make a left. It's either I make a right going back to it and I'm, I'm going to go on with this argument or even have this or entertain this 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 pettiness that I'm going through. Or I'm going to bust a quick left and I'm not just going to entertain it at all. What are going to be, what's going to be the two different outcomes that, that's going to happen? Have that. Because passiveness works but not always. There's certain situations for you to be like, nah, I see it. Move away from me, bro. Uh, not today. Not me. Go waste someone else's, you know, emotions or time. Sometimes you have to address certain situations with people. There's no just, hey, 
Arabs, as Arabs, we love to do that, bro. As argumentative as we can be and stuff, why do you think we, like, why do we think we, we, we have all these, like, anger issues, bro? It's because in our culture, it's not, we don't speak on everything. It's usually like, nah, it's okay, bro. No, just, it's all good, especially our moms, right? No, no, your your sibling was, you know, they, they were not really the, like, you guys are, you guys are good friends, or you guys are brothers, or you guys are this, you guys are, it's fine, it's fine. For the betterment, of course, of the family, right? To, to keep a, a healthy family dynamic and a relationship in the family. But moving on with that is many times, whether it's, I could speak from personal experiences with business, sometimes you absolutely need to be confrontational. Whether it's going to be employees, business relationships, partners, vendors, you need to be able to have those awkward, tough situations where you're stern. Because if you stay quiet, you basically, there's a saying that says you allow what you don't speak up on. I, I, it's not verbatim, right? But basically what it's, what it's intending is if you stay quiet about something, you allowing it. You're allowing the whatever it is. If something bothered you, you would be speaking up because it would be so important for you to, to, to bring that up. Like, yo, that's not it. Yeah, enabling bad habits, for sure. Enabling it. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely maturity is, uh, even though for the, for, uh, it's very, very good point because I feel like I was really introducing it from the angle of, you know, having that passiveness. But being mature is also recognizing when something is wrong and having the maturity to call it out for it is and not letting the potential emotions of the situation overcome the importance of bringing it up by addressing it i'm not saying you're gonna start off at 10 out of 10 you're not gonna be hey what the heck are you saying yeah there's there's wisdom behind it there's wisdom there's wisdom to addressing things exactly there's a way you do certain things now there's certain petty things so it's like say for example you're walking then out of nowhere like a random individual let's just say i don't know like a homeless person for example they go up to you and they cuss you out for no good reason. If you walk away, you'll you'll forget about it. You'd be like, oh, dude, can't believe that happened. That was so random. But you walk away. But if you were to go ahead and just like be immature and be like, how dare he call me these words? And does he not respect me? And how what? Bro, you're speaking to that wall. You have a, you'll have a better conversation with that brick wall right behind us. Than having a conversation. So that's why having that vision, it's more like you have to address it properly if it needs to be addressed. Yeah, like you said, pick your battles. Uh, I guess like t- kind of touching back on what you were saying earlier, I really like the, the idea of being proactive and being prepared for situations before they actually happen. And having that, you know, like we said before, that that mindset of going into things and understanding that the maturity is going to come in the sense of, yeah, like, like preparing yourself for the events that may, may occur. And I just, I just wanted to highlight that for some reason. Now, like, look, we can try to be as proactive as we possibly can, but we live in this thing called life that none of us fully understand. When it comes down to it, at the end of the day, we could try to plan out our whole life, our day second by second. But we know life has its ways of taking control. And being like, yo, you thought. And just surprising us. And this is exactly what's going to happen. So what I'm trying to get to is that there are going to be moments where you are going to be put in tough situations where you're forced to be, where you're forced to be uh, reactive. You're not always going to be in control of life. That's why this whole concept of stoicism is really, it's really intrigued me. And even though I haven't, uh, I haven't really like done much research, but it's like those random, this is like those random, like, TikToks or random yeah random videos but no stoicism is something that like you know i've been introduced to like a while while back like a few years ago and i feel like i've uh i feel like i feel like to some degree 
I have a bit of stoicism, like, you know, within me. And I feel like I've just been better and like just trying to improve at it better and better. And the, the beautiful thing about stoicism is like, you know, talking about what you're, you know, based on what you're saying here is like life is going to hit you with surprises. No matter how much you prepare for things, another surprise is going to come in from a different angle. You're not going to be ready for it. A perfect example is business. A perfect example is business. Before we get into an example, uh, stoicism fits perfectly here because stoicism really preaches the idea that no matter what happens in life, in your control, out of your control, whatever the results are, whatever you get hit with, whatever you're rewarded with, just whatever happens to you, you have a very neutral response to it. You don't have this reactive, this emotionally reactive, this impulsive reaction to it. It's more of just a neutral acceptance of what happened. Mm. And so the way it connects in my mind to so this whole concept of maturity is like, yes, you can plan for everything in life. But when life hits you with surprises and you have a neutral acceptance of what those surprises are, then you can move forward without that emotional trigger. You know what? You know what a maturity is right now? Maturity is experience. Maturity is definitely experience. That's what it is. Maturity is experience because when you're experienced in certain things in life, been there, done that, so you know how you felt at that certain situation, and that you know what you did in order to get yourself out of that situation how to resolve a specific problem. The best thing going back to it with the cool car rental business, right? Well, five, six months ago, we were both taking deep, deep hits for one car. And then a couple days or a couple weeks later, the other car gets crashed as well. That second car didn't hurt as much. Now, it definitely did financially, but emotionally, I was able to, since I was already experienced and I already gone through the emotions, the extreme emotions of what I've gone through for the first car, I was able to accept the situation for what it was. And I was able to just look at it from a third person's perspective. Like, all right, cool. Here's what needs to be done. This sucks. I missed the car. All these emotions, blah, blah, blah. This sucks. I'm losing money off. But at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, bet. It does suck. What are you going to do about it? If you're going to continue to wallow on your own, then you're only, the situation is only going to get worse. So in general, experience is maturity. Bro. That's actually, that's actually super, super important that you mentioned that because I like a hundred percent agree with you because I obviously went through the exact same experience. Bro, you remember how, how affected I was emotionally. Bro, I was like straight up depressed with the whole Corvette situation back in uh, back in November. Dude, with that whole situation, it 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 completely it broke you. It broke me, it shifted my world view. I just I went into I went into like this 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 zone which I've never been before. And it was crazy. And then the situation that happened to me in February with where literally my two most expensive cars get into back to back accidents nine days apart. Bro, you should have seen my reaction. You know, obviously you could tell that just me as a person, like I wasn't as affected by it. But when I got the call about the Corvette, it's like, dude, I'm so sorry to tell you. I don't know how to put this, bro. But like, blah, 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 blah. I literally was just like, cool, man. Where's it at right now? Let me go check it out. Like it was, it was, I was just so casual about it. And it doesn't go to say that like, I wasn't necessarily, you know, upset to a degree because absolutely, you know, like, uh, you know, it's, it's a beautiful asset. It's a, you know, obviously a very, very important part of my business. Um, you know, it's one of my top earning vehicles and this, this and that. So obviously to a degree I was upset, but my reaction to it was exactly what you said. All right. I've been through this before. What do I need to do to resolve this? How am I going to get past this? Let me get it out of the way so I can move on and just focus on the next big thing in my life. So yeah, having that stoicism, having that, uh, that neutral acceptance of situation, it's, it's a huge sign of maturity. Mm -hmm. Because once again, once you're clear minded going into the resolution, that resolution can only happen faster. 
And then it, that resolution only becomes clearer and clearer as you keep on moving towards it. It's, you're completely clear of clouded judgment. And it, what clouds your judgment the most? It's your emotions, 100%. And the reason why your emotions are going to put that resolution a lot further down the line and you won't be able to achieve that resolution sooner is because you're going to have to, first of all, go through the emotions, satisfy those, allow time to pass for you to settle down until finally you have a clear head and you think about, all right, how do I, how do I repair the situation? So from like a mental health perspective, something that's very important too is going through it. You still, just because, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because a situation sucks and you have to have that maturity to not overreact and be overly emotional because it's going to cloud your judgment and everything. You later on deal with it emotionally. Have, have, just air it out, just let it out, whether it's anger or whether it's sadness, whether it's this, whether it's air it out because that's what's healthy, man. Because if you're going to keep on holding every single thing, eventually, a minor inconvenience is going to happen in your life. Blaze. Just fire over the smallest thing. So being able to battle your demons in a way, right? In, in, in that sense is very, very, very important for your own mental health and well-being. 100%. Deal I mean, with it. I'm, gl I'm glad you brought up the point of mental health because that's maturity too, bro. It is maturity to be able to, you know, to just go through it in order that you can grow from it and whatnot. But it's also it's also good to take into consideration that a part of maturity is understanding that when these situations happen, they do affect you emotionally. You need to not necessarily just ignore those emotions or not necessarily put them to the side. So yes and no, we're really good at that just because I feel like we're just really good at that but at the same time you can't you can't 100 percent neglect those those emotions those feelings that you get yeah because they are genuine and the fact of the matter is, is the more you do bottle them up the more they might have an outburst reaction later down the line so it is important that like a part of maturity is knowing how to address those emotions and in a situation like business a perfect idea would be to hey i'm going through the emotions right now i just went through this stressful situation let me go talk to my mentor. Let me open up about how I feel to somebody I know will help me with the answers. And it's going to do it's going to be twofold. It's going to be a situation in which you're able to open up, you get it off your chest. It's so it's going to make you feel better. But the second thing, the second thing about that is that th that mentor is now going to give you an appropriate solution that you can start working on. So do address your emotions, right? Don't necessarily justify your emotions and like completely throw everything away and have like this, you know, this almost like tantrum, like a tantrum reaction, you know, but do address your own emotions because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you can still go to bed at night with a clear head and a sound heart, you know, but uh, a, another, another topic as we, as we're talking about emotions and maturity is, you know, being able to understand and be considerate of the emotions of others. Right. Uh, like how other, like what you do needs to be considerate of how it's going to make somebody else feel. You need to understand that even though like, you know, if we were to like paint a picture of maturity, I feel like it's just like, you know, you know, stern robotic movement and like focused and like, oh, you know, I don't joke. I don't play around. It's like, oh, this person's so mature. And like, sure, you know, there's, there's, there might be some positives. There might be some truth to that. There's situations where you should be like that. There are hundred percent are situations where you should be like that. But a sense of maturity also has to involve, hey, when I'm doing what I'm doing, right, which is ninety percent of the time, you got to do you, right. But when I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm focusing on me. And I'm focusing on achieving, and, you know, tackling one thing after another. A sense of maturity, especially, especially in like household is being considerate of how your actions are affecting those around you. Because 
although it's for the sake of maturity per se, you don't know how somebody might feel neglected. You don't know how somebody might think this person is just so focused on themselves that I'm not getting it. I'm not getting the attention that I need. And it, you know, it works both ways too, because at the end of the day, you need attention as well as a mature person, especially as someone who's trying to be focused, trying to be diligent, who's working hard day in and day out, one project after another, one idea after another. At the end of the day, you don't want to feel neglected either. We're still human at the end of the day. hundred percent, hundred percent. So being considerate of people's emotions and people's feelings, uh, you know, obviously it goes, it goes a long way. It goes a long way and you have to, a part of being mature is just always having that consideration. I feel like I'm just repeating myself for the third time now, but it's important. I want to, I want to, I want to kind of like drag other examples into this whole concept. Is there anything that comes to your mind? One thing does, and it, sometimes it, when we're like in a, uh, from a family setting or even friend setting too, when you're roasting people, right? When you're just making fun of them, everyone laughing, but you got to think about, for the most part, you got to know your crowd and alhamdulillah, we're around some people who can definitely take a joke and dish it back at you, mm -hmm. which is amazing, right? It's just, it, it, it's so funny. It's satisfying. It's very rewarding. It's satisfying. When great, you, it's like a great game of ping pong. Yeah, exactly. When someone just, you get them and they just spike the ball at you and you're like, oh, shoot. Right, you just got to stop and you just shake their hand out of appreciation. But you're basically bringing someone down for entertainment. Now, many times that, that, that may work, but know what you're saying. There's certain levels to it, right? There's certain subjects that you should bring up. There's certain things that you should... So, I guess what I'm trying to get to is there's certain subjects you should you should not bring up. You should avoid. Uh, so like, it's 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 very important to know your crowd. So talking to, say, like your mother, or your sister, right? You're not gonna have as savage of remarks and comments and banter with them, as opposed to say, like your father. Or say like me, for example, can, you can say whatever it is. I'd be like, ah, oh, dude, screw you, right? I'm not even going to only put on women. There are some men out there that their line, their level of acceptance of, of joking around is pretty low. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I find myself, you know, I'll admit that I uh, sometimes I... I have this issue where I think we all do. Yeah, no, we all do. But no, the, the, the issue that I have is not necessarily just saying things at the wrong things at the wrong time, but an issue that I have is I'll like throw out a joke and I won't get the reaction that I expected. And I'm like, Oh, you know, they're mature enough to, to understand that I'm just joking. And it's like, that's very inconsiderate because now I'm, you know, just kind of like making this assumption that they're not being affected by it, you know? And that is a prime example of just not being considerate of how people's emotions are, or what people's reactions to what you say is. Just because of the, just because like in my head, I'm like, oh, they're mature enough to, to know I'm joking. It's like, dude, you don't know that. Mm -hmm. You don't know that. Uh, but especially in relationships, being considerate of people's emotions and feelings, you know, it really... It really is. I guess it revolved around the idea of the of, of emotional emotional intelligence, right? Emotional intelligence and just understanding that, you know, like for example, um, you know, in, in in today's society, it's it's so common where it's like you know you meet someone, you talk to them for a while, you know, there might be it might be reciprocated you know reciprocated interest between both of you, and then after a while, one person just ghosts the other. You know, and ghosting has just become so flipping common, and it's, you know, it's 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 heavily inconsiderate. It's heavily inconsiderate to that person's emotion. Who are you? <laughs> Where do I begin? I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
No, but emotion, emotional intelligence in relationships is, is a huge, huge sign of maturity. Just understanding that the way you speak to someone and the, the feelings they will begin to develop from the way you're talking to them, how you're talking to them, how long you've been talking to them, right? And then just understanding, like, dude, if I just ghost this person that, or like right now, even though, like, sure, dude, to a degree, by all means, if you lose interest or if you're just not into it anymore, which is the same thing, and you're just like, I'm just going to cut this off because I think that's what's best for me. By all means, like, go ahead. But give the person a little bit of closure. Closure? Give them closure, right? Let them know. And honestly, more often than not, and this is this is the most immature part about it, is we fear what their reaction is going to be if we don't give them closure. We, uh, yeah, I feel like we also fear, I fear, like, you fear that conversation. You just don't want to go through the inconvenience of that awkwardness of bringing it up, like, hey, like, which is very, very immature. Like, yo, we've been talking for a week. We've been talking for a month, a year. I don't see it going anywhere. That's an awkward conversation to have. It's a very tough conversation. Just to be like, I'll just not reply back to that worse thing. I'll just block the person. Yeah. It's easy. Mm -hmm. But that is so immature of a person. It's very, very immature. Like you mentioned, like mm -hmm. you mentioned earlier, it, those are the tough conversations that people need to have. And part of that, part of, you know, a huge sign of maturity is being able to accept, okay, you know what? We need to talk about this. This is genuinely what the situation is. And like I said, nine out of 10 times, the person is going to be more accepting than you think. More often than not, the result, when you do address it properly, it's going to come out way better than you'd expect. But it is a tough conversation, but it needs to be had. Plus the person... I don't care how angry or offended they're going to be off you telling them like, yo, I don't have any interests. Yeah, they may be going through that because it's normal. But at the same time, at the end of that conversation, they're going to respect you for it. Which falls under your own personal brand. And I learned that when I used to work at Enterprise. They used to always say, yeah, you're working for the brand Enterprise. But you also have your own personal brand. Just you presenting yourself, your work ethic, the way you carry yourself. You can take that out of the whole business realm into your own personal. Who are you? What brand are like whenever people think of Mustafa, what words would they associate? Your image and your reputation. So if you're a person that's immature, that gets into certain situations, plays with people, manipulates people just to dip and then move on to the next and next and next. You're going to have a horrible reputation and that brand name is going to be tarnished. This brings up a very, uh, a very interesting point where you know how like it's very common in Islamic culture where, you know, backbiting is an absolute zero, you know? If you know something about someone, or even if you have like doubts about someone, like you keep it to I yourself. Love, I love that. And also too, it's like, yo, you have doubts about someone, or you're gonna accuse someone, you have to have about three witnesses. You just 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 don't do it. Yeah, but but even that, like you have to have three witnesses. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, three or four. We have, we talked about this. You have to have about three to four witnesses, which basically means that like where in today's society we're in a exposed culture oh blah 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 andrew tate's been exposed oh man have you seen whatever it is oh dude i can't wait to expose them oh they've been exposed 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 what is the what is what do you gain from that yeah people get off on 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 this whole uh like cheese me like just flipping drama like I don't I don't know why I don't know why people really need to that's so disrespectful bro. It, it's it's so immature. Yeah. It's so immature. People get off on putting other people down. It's it's 
it's a huge reflection of their own personalities and their obviously their insecurities. But that's unfortunately in today's society, that's what gets you. Yeah. That's what gets likes on your Instagram. That's what people want to know. They want it. So what do you see in your life? And I want to mm-hmm. live through you. Yeah. But not in the good way, though. They want to they, they want to know that drama that's going on between you and your family or whatever it is because their life is so unfulfilling that they need to live through other people. Mm-hmm. That, that at the end of the day, they live a life. They live their own life. But they're not even the main character, bro. Yeah. They're legit a side character in their own story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what it's what grabs attention. It what it's what hooks people. And that's that's it's uh, to that point exactly is one of the reasons why I've never in my life followed a celebrity. I've never cared to watch a drama series on television that revolves around the life of a celebrity. Because it's 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 exactly that. It's like, why 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 am I gonna care so much about somebody else's life just because the world thinks they're important? And it's like, what are they important for? Yeah, you and, know. And let's be honest, like the people that have some sort of like importance, most likely is like either an actor or like an artist, right? A musician or rapper. But like, what importance are they? Is that person bringing in your life? Are they paying your bills? No. So why the hell are they so important? You need to be like, yo, Drake and Kanye, Kanye and Adidas, and bro, why you have nothing else to talk about? Yeah, no. is your life that freaking boring that you need to bring up some other person's drama? I'll even I'll even take it a step further, bro. Like. Some people, like for the example of, of, you know, actors and artists. Okay, you like them for whatever reason, for whatever art, the, whatever art they perform and whatnot. You respect but, them. You respect them. Or you respect them for their craft, for their effort. Absolutely, yeah. sure. But to follow their whole life, come on, man. No, like, like I said, I'll, I'll take it a step further. Those pe- those are you know, the the stuff they put out. Really has more of a negative effect on society than does a positive. You know, and then and then you look deep into their lifestyle, and it's like the only takeaway that you could potentially talk about and actually benefit from is like where they invest their money, but that's not what gets viewed. You know, it's all about the drama, what happens inside the household, and like that, like you know, watching their lifestyle has been even bigger detriment to society. So it's like it's all just horrible. But anyways, the point I was trying to bring up uh, a moment before we got into this was in Islamic culture it's very it's very frowned upon it's 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 completely hot on to backbite to talk about people behind their back right uh not only because it's immature but because it has a lot of negative effects but in a situation in which you're interested in someone for the sake of marriage when somebody asks you somebody asks you Malik and they go hey I have a friend or you know, let's say it's a girl and they're personally interested in me, for example. They go, what do you know about Mustafa Bibi? It is actually your duty and your responsibility to just unleash whatever dirt you know about me in order that they have a full understanding of who I am. You know, it's funny to get extremely personal. And this is very rare. Mm-hmm. But send it, bro. It's freaking for you, KOA. Let's go. First time on camera, bro. Might as well. No, legit. I didn't tell. I didn't tell anyone this. Mm-hmm. But there was, there is a person that I have some sort of interest in, and I know that. A, I basically know that that girl's friend mm-hmm. really well. We grew up with each other. Like basically, we're like brother and sister, basically, right? So I know how close that person is in her life. So the other day, I legit gave her a phone call. I was like, "Hey, we had like a twenty-minute, thirty-minute conversation about that one person. Let me know, like, what's up?" It's not a lot, bro. 
he was telling me like you know how long i was trying to set you guys up i was like are you serious but going back to it the relevance of me telling the story is i went to a person asked about that person like you know saying to, to, to my friend asked about her friend and she gave me everything i needed to know and because of that I was able to then make a judgment of, you know, what am I going to possibly pursue this or am I not? So it's very important. It's a prime example. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it goes back to the whole conversation of like, you know, having that emotional intelligence and being in a position where, yeah, what were you talking about before I brought up the whole thing? Of what? Oh, I remember what I was going to bring up. Yeah, there's never an appropriate situation in which you should expose people. Except in a situation where you're interested in someone in marriage and you ask about that person. And then also business relations as well. Also business relationships. Absolutely. Uh, because business reputation is sometimes even more important than a person's reputation, period. Right? Uh, but in the situation of marriage, right, it's important for those details to come out because it would be very, very inconsiderate the person to the person who's interested, right? Let's say for you, for example, you in this situation that you're in right now, for her to hide any details from you, it's very inappropriate and it's very inconsiderate to you, right? And her friend. And her friend as well. But I mean, it, it'd be less inconsiderate for her friend because then she's just hiding whatever her friend's flaws are. Uh, but what's really nice about this whole situation in which like, you know, the idea that the only time you can ever really expose someone's deep, dark secrets is when somebody else is interested in them is it kind of puts you in this constant mindset of, I got to make sure I put myself on check 24, seven, 365, because at the end of the day, no matter how close I get with you, for example, I know the day is going to come when somebody says, Mustafa Bibi, what do you know about him? And I want to make sure, because like you said, like you said, you want people to associate your brand, your name, your reputation. They want to associate it with good things, right? And so at the end of the day, this whole concept, this whole Islamic concept, it's beautiful because it constantly makes me ch put myself on check in order that when the day comes, the resume that you present to my potential spouse is a resume that I can be proud of. Of course. You know? It's so like, it's I like, wanted to... It's like a wedding, right? When, like, when all the boys get together and we're absolutely celebrating the person that we're getting involved with the, you know, with, with one of the homies, you know, wife's family, and now we're just talking like, yo, this guy is just amazing. We've known him for, since we are children, whatever it is. That's such a great... I feel like from like family's perspective, that's a great sign that like the, this guy is loved by so many people and the, like they're all saying the same story and it's at coming off as genuine as possible. It's too, it's, it's, it's too real to not to, to be fake. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But another thing with, with the whole thing is of maturity and also relationships and family and stuff like that. And, and it's unfortunate, but something that I've noticed um, is the whole thing of someone not being ready for marriage, since we're talking about marriage, but their family forces them to a marriage position or into marriage where the person knowing that their own son or daughter is not ready mature wise like maturity wise financially so they're basically thinking the family wise is like yo i'm gonna get you married so that way hopefully when you're married you're gonna mature you're gonna get your ish together dude personally from my own experience i think you're setting almost that person up for failure you're setting up your son for failure and you're also setting up that poor lady for failure as well because that lady's getting into it with full-on trust 
that your own parents are telling the truth, that you as a man, you're ready for this commitment where many times people are not, but the family's just there like backing them up. Like, yeah, he's a leader. He knows exactly what he wants. He's extremely mature. He's such a good man. But bro, you're going to tell the parents at the end of the day, they're going to give each other like a high five and be like, yo, thank God. They bought it. Then later on, a year, six months, whatever it is, it goes on. And then you hear a story, yo, that person cheated on the other guy, on the, on the, on the girl. Wait, what happened? Oh, it ended up in like in a divorce. Whether they cheated, whether they it ended a divorce because of complications and immaturity and stuff. That is detrimental to a community, especially being Muslim. We're known to have our ummah, that sense of a community that we need to look out for each other. How dare us as a society think, and this is cultural, so not religious, but many times people get culture and religion mixed up. How dare the family and also the man force themselves to fight something, you know what I'm saying, that like, they, they're not able to take to, to take on that responsibility, but they still go through with it. It's like out of nowhere, someone pulls me into like a CEO position of Apple. And I have absolutely no experience in the corporate world. I'm just, I'm green, I'm fresh out of college or just, and I'm just, it, it's, it's all. <laughs> you, you get what I'm trying to say now? There are small possibilities that you are going to mature that you are going to assume that role, assume that commitment, and you're going to excel at it. And that's going to be the best decision of your life. But that's very rare for it to happen. But it's very uncommon, man. It's very uncommon. It's very uncommon. No, it's, a, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really, it's really sad how many situations you do hear like that. Um, very similar. I had a friend explain to me that like, you know, all of her friends were married at this point, And like, she's like the only single one or whatever. And, her last one of her last homies that got married same thing the guy just ended up being a total garbage piece of garbage you know and it was one of those situations where you know the guys had his past you know and and you know it's 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 actually it's actually very islamic to kind of like hide your past and just understand that maybe a person you know they they ask allah for forgiveness and they've genuinely made a change in themselves and we can talk about all that. And obviously, it's, it's it's a very, very mature perspective to kind of say, you know what, no matter what a person did in their past, you know, it's, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to turn a blind eye because I'm just under the assumption that Allah has forgiven them, this, this, and that. But the situation that she was talking about, the guy was still a piece of crap. And the girl was as pure as could be. That a good family girl, she, you know, like she, 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 she takes, she, well, she does her part. She does her part as a team player, and the guy is just an absolute dirtbag. And it kind of connects back to what we just mentioned. How on earth did that relationship happen, except that somebody gassed up that guy and hid all of his flaws, even though they knew they should have told her the truth about what kind of a person he is? 100%. And, you know, it's kind of like a separate point, like you were mentioning, um, you know, to... It, 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 it is a sign of maturity when somebody understands, you know, when to say no, when to say no. And, you know, we talked about, you know, how like we've been, I've been in a situation multiple times where it's like, I feel like I'm a one man show, a one man army. I want to just, I want to like, I don't want to burden others. So I just want to do everything. Right. 